Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome back to another video in our series where we are taking a look at building patches from scratch for the Korg Volker FM. So we're here in Synthmata, my free browser-based patch editor for the Volker FM, ready to get creating our sounds. And we're going to look at another pad patch. Now, in the previous video, we built a pad and we took a very sort of distinctively FM approach to doing it, where we had only a single carrier, a single voice, and we got the richness that we wanted for our pad by sending multiple modulators into that carrier and having those modulators all interact with each other in interesting ways and, and build up a really sort of rich, um, glossy, warbly kind of pad. Uh, and that's a very FM way of working. Now, in this video, I want to look at kind of the sort of FM does analog kind of approach where we rather than have a single carrier and we use multiple modulators instead we are going to have uh, several carriers so this is the equivalent of having multiple oscillators on say an analog synth um, so let's get going and see how that works so um, as before we're going to start by scrolling down and picking out our algorithm the algorithm I'm going to go with is algorithm 5 this is an algorithm that I, I end up using quite a lot because um, I guess because of the background that I have in, in building sounds for sort of um, analog subtractive synthesis, this is the one that really sort of shouts out to me um, uh, for that sort of approach because we've got three carriers and each of those carriers have got their own modulator. And in the case of uh, modulator, uh, rather operator six, that's also got uh, some operator feedback that we can make use of as well. So um, currently, uh, initialize patch more or less sounds like this, kind of all raspy and and whatever. So um, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by turning off um, my three operators, which are acting as my modulator. So I've, I'm just left with uh, the sine wave uh, carriers there, uh, and I'm going to start by building the um, envelopes for my carriers. This is kind of, I guess, like sort of setting up your oscillators before you start playing around with your filters. So um, I'm going to set all of their course frequencies to begin with to the same thing. So it's two, two, oh, they're already all set at two. That's cool. Um, and then I'm going to detune them. Now, we could go ahead and use the actual detune control here, but I'm going to be a little bit braver and I'm going to use the fine frequency and get a little bit more um, movement from them. So this is at the moment where we're at. Very pure kind of sound. So operator three, I'm just going to turn it up one notch and operator five, that's my, my third carrier. I'm going to put it up two notches and this is the sound that we get now. It's kind of like a slightly warbly organ at the moment. Not very pad-like, but we will get there, don't you worry. Um, now, um, let's go ahead and get uh, kind of a pad kind of envelope going. For this patch, um, to sort of contrast it with the last one, I'm going to go for a pad that rather than sort of fades in, has a bit more of an attack to it. So um, for the moment, I'm just going to adjust the um, uh, envelope rate four, which is essentially our release. Um, I'm going to put it down to 35-ish on each of my carriers there. So now we get this sort of sound. Which instantly is kind of a kind of a, a cool pad sound, I guess. Um, but of course, because we've got those three additional operators here, which are going to add uh, harmonics to our sound, we should definitely make use of those. So um, what I'm going to do now that I've just sort of tuned my operators is turn off um, the first two. And I'm just going to focus on operator five and six. And I'm going to deal with this one first because uh, this is the one that has the feedback. Um, so this is probably going to define the sound a little bit more than the others because it's going to have a bit more cut to it. So let's turn it on and we're getting a sound like this. So you can hear that because we've detuned uh, operator 5, and at the moment the fine tune for operator 6 is still at 0. Things are sounding a bit weird, but we will um, fine tune that as we go along. I've got a little sequence um, on the Volcraft I'm already set up, so I'm going to set that going and see where we get. 
Uh, so one thing I've just noticed is that my uh, operators that are my carriers aren't all set on full, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn those up. Uh, just for the moment. Okay. So um, at the moment, our modulator is turning on pretty much instantly and releasing almost instantly, which is why we're getting that sort of um, blip at the start of the sound and then it sort of dies away. And obviously we, we want to get a bit more um, of a release. So let's turn up EGR4 for our modulator. So the rule of thumb um, for this is um, if you want your modulator to not get to zero and therefore end up with just a um, sine wave, make sure that your release four for your modulator is lower, so slower if you like, than your release for your uh, carrier that's associated with it. Okay, so I'm going to nudge the fine frequency for operator 6 nearer to the fine frequency. So we're still getting a bit of wobble, just not as much. Let's um, play with the course a little bit as well, see where we can get. Yep, okay, that's kind of calling out to me a bit more. It's a bit bright right at the top, but we can probably adjust that a bit. So, kind of what I've got planned for this um, this pad sound is to, for it to be one of those pad sounds that has a little bit of attack. Uh, and the way I'm going to get that attack is I'm going to have my modulator um, come on quick and then drop to a lower level very, very quick. And what that does is essentially gives us a bit of a, a, a click or ping at the start of our sound. So I'm just going to set the level to just arbitrarily down to there apparently. And then I'm going to bring up EGR2, so this is going to make the drop from L1 to L2 much faster. And I'm just going to find a point where I get quite a nice ping. Can you hear that we've got this quite distinctive ping happening at the start of moment now? Now for me, I can kind of... I can kind of hear the pings... Um, sort of flow down on those high notes, not so much on the low notes. And this um, introduces a useful control here called the operate, operator rate scale. Haven't done a video on it yet, uh, will do. But in short, if you turn this up, uh, what it does is that for the higher notes, uh, all of these rates sort of act faster, so pingy things get pingier. Um, and that's kind of what I want to go for here. So I'm just going to turn it up a couple of notches. Can you hear there now that those upper notes are just that little bit pingier and the low notes? Still more or less as they were. Okay, so at the moment that's getting a little bit too dull, too early for my liking. So I'm just going to bring up EGL2 a little bit. Okay, that can go higher. Okay, I uh, think that's working for me. Mm, maybe a little bit higher. Yeah, there we go. That's nice. We're still getting that sort of richness and the slight sort of uh, frequency beating happening because the fine tuning is offset slightly between the modulator and the carrier. Uh, now we've also got this feedback control here and operator 6 is um, having feedback app applied to it if we turn this up so let's see what we can get. I'm gonna be brave and okay it's quite cool and brassy now but probably a little bit over the top now Okay, I like it more at five, but it's still a bit too much, so what we can do is just lower this a little bit. Yep, 
Yeah, cool. Okay, so now we've kind of established the overall uh, sort of uh, approach that we're going to take. We can probably bring in the other operators pretty quickly. So let's bring operator three in. Okay, and this is its uh, modulator here. So I want a bit more brightness. Okay, I need to have that release. Yeah. It's starting to come together quite nicely. It's got a slight sickness to it, which I quite like. And we're going to do the same sort of idea with, with our pingy sort of attack. So we can take a look at what worked down here. So 69 for the release, uh, sorry, for the uh, rate two. Let's go with that again then. Uh, and find a point. And again, you can hear that kind of slide at the moment. That's because we haven't got the operator rate scale turned up. So let's give that a nudge up one. Don't go up two before. Let's go up two then. Cool. Uh, right, so same thing for the final one. So exactly the same approach, really. Turn up the operator output level, give it a longer release. Okay, so the frequency course on this one is set lower for this modulator, which is sort of pitching everything down a bit, which I think is given a nice bit of weight to the sound. Let's play with the fine tuning so if we can get a bit more wobble happening. Okay, so that's quite a lot of bubble, but remember we're also going to apply that uh, sort of drop off for the ping, so it's not going to be quite as obvious. So same deal again, we'll 69 there, find a point. Okay, now, what we're not getting at the moment, so we've got this sort of initial uh, drop down, if you like, um, to get that pinginess. What I'd like is a little bit more movement happening in the modulators uh, sort of over the time that we're uh, playing the notes as well. So what I'm going to do is turn up EGR3 a little bit. So those sustained notes are also sort of having their harmonic content changed a bit more obviously. Don't forgot to do the rate scale here. Do we think we can have the release of the actual notes go a little bit longer? I reckon yes. So let's increase, sorry, rather decrease the EGR4 for our carriers. That sort of richness that we're getting from that detuning there is really appealing to me and this is what comes from from being a little bit braver about what we're doing with our fine frequencies don't neglect the fine frequency control because it can really do some pretty magical stuff okay uh, let's talk about uh, lfo a little bit i reckon that a little bit of pitch more wobble might be really nice here I'm going to go ahead and set the wave shape to sign because I've just got a feeling about it. So uh, set the LFO speed, hmm, slowish. Go to 
turn up the pitch mod sensitivity by one, and then start to bring up the mod depth. Too much. Slightly too much, or is it that it's too slow? Let's try a bit faster. Oh, I'm torn. Uh, I think somewhere in the middle, actually, speed-wise. I think probably still need to turn the... No, that's pretty. Now, do we want to just delay the onset of the LFO just a tiny bit so that first bit of the note has a little bit more clarity? Let's just try that. It's too long, I think. And you want the very first bit to be... Yeah. That's really nice. This is a nice sound. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the way this is going. Uh, okay, let's uh, double check how things are sounding in other registers. Let's uh, transpose this down a little bit. Okay, uh, I think that's pretty much okay. Gets a little bit obviously FME, but I don't think there's much you can do about that. There's an FM synth after all. Let's, let's try pushing up a bit. Okay, so <laughs> up here things have got really messy because of the way that we've been detuning uh, operators. So we're going to have to address that a little bit. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about the right curve of our modulator. So we want that to be negative, and we'll just turn up the depth a little bit. And we'll do that on all of them. Just see, just arbitrarily, where that gets us. Yeah, see, that's starting to calm that down a bit. question is, has that made things too boring in the low registers now? So it's taken a little bit of the sparkle out. So let's move our break point uh, so that's where it starts to take effect a little bit higher so that we leave these notes alone a bit more. Okay, let's try uh, 63. Ish. It's not an exact science. Okay, that's still taking too much out for me. So I'm just going to bring the depth of the scaling down a bit. Sometimes you just got to compromise a little bit. Okay, let's try the upper registers again. Yes, yeah, see they're still wobbly, but they're nowhere near as sort of weird as they were. Great, okay, so the last thing that I want to address is getting this to respond to velocity a little bit because it just it's just begging to be a bit darker when the velocity's turned down. So I'm just going to turn the key velocity sense on all of our modulators just up to one just to see how that feels across the whole range. So it's currently with it turned at full and down at the bottom. So we've still got some of that brightness, just that pinginess, but a lot of that's coming from the fact that we've got our envelopes working nicely for us. And as we, we turn up, some more and some more and then pretty much yeah, and then we're back full could we be braver there? let's find out let's set that to 2 and just take a, a listen through that range again you can hear now 
because we've pushed the key velocity sense a little bit and our velocity is on full, things have actually got slightly brighter because it's actually pushing the output level beyond its maximum. I don't find that unpleasant, so I don't mind. So let's have a listen to the range again. So this is that's minimum. So that's darker. In a nice way, that's nice, that's pretty. I really like okay, sorry. <laughs> Distracted by the nice sound. Okay, so pushing it up. Yeah, see this seems like a better Better progression over the whole range, and again towards full again. I love that's on full now, and now it's pushed a little bit harder with the key velocity sense. It's just a slight sickness to the way that it's sort of uh, wobbling now that I'm really keen on. I love pads that sound a little bit unstable, and that's doing it for me now. That's nice. Now, is there anything else that we really want to address here? I'm going to avoid doing my pitch envelope uh, thing that I always do on pads. Uh, if you're interested in what I'm talking about there, uh, take a look at the previous video where I, I did do my pitch envelope um, thing. Now, I guess the one other thing that we might want to consider is do we want to put some amp mod on the modulators to get them to sort of throb with the harmonics? I think there's so much beating happening in the sound that it's not really going to add anything other than sort of destabilizing the overall sound. Uh, so do we instead want to put some amp mod on the carriers to get essentially some tremolo again? I'm not convinced it's going to add anything because there's so much movement already in the sound. So for the moment, I think... We're going to call that a patch. That's nice. Um, pleased with the way that's come out. Uh, now, despite the fact I said this was kind of an FM does analog kind of approach, um, obviously this doesn't sound terribly uh, analog. It definitely sounds um, digital and, and FM in it, but um, certainly with the lower velocity. It's got a certain warmness to it that I, that I quite like and it certainly sounds like as we lower that velocity what we're doing is we're turning down a low pass filter which kind of gives us that uh, FM does analog kind of feel. So uh, let's go ahead I will create a shareable patch link so that I can share that with you guys that will be in the description of the video. Oh wait a second forgot to name the patch must do that first we're going to call it Pad two, and that says pass pad two. There we go. Um, so that will be in, and I'll just save that as well while we're at it. That will be in the uh, video description for you to um, click on and send it straight to your Volker FM so that you can have a listen to it. This is definitely one of those patches I think will probably work well on the actual DX7 because I think it will be really nice and expressive to play. Sadly, don't own one. Never mind. Anyway, I digress. Um, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope that you enjoyed that and found that interesting and useful. I hope you maybe picked up some new tricks or some new approaches that you might want to take when you are creating your patches. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it the thumbs up and make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. There'll be lots of uh, these videos um, still to come. We'll be building, uh, oh, I don't know what I'm going to build next. Let me know in the comments what you want to see next. Basses, uh, leads, bells, percussion. I've been building a lot of percussion stuff recently. I'm really into that at the moment. Now, if you are uh, interested in seeing the patches that I'm building in the background for the new patch pack, make sure you are also um, following me on Facebook where I'm posting a lot of sort of teaser videos for those sounds as we go along. Uh, but other than that, thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.